Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bruce Gordon with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Thank you for joining us here today and those online watching across the state and country this afternoon. We're here to announce that the Minnesota Driver's Manual has been updated to include information on what drivers and law enforcement should expect during a traffic stop, especially when a driver has a firearm. You're going to hear from several speakers today, Public Safety Commissioner John Harrington, Valerie Castile advocated for the addition to the manual to help provide consistency during traffic stops. She'll be speaking today. Her son, Philando, died four years ago today during a traffic stop. Also with us today, Assistant Commissioner of, Pub uh, of Public Safety uh, for Law Enforcement, uh, Booker Hodges. Emma Corey is the Director of Driver and Vehicle Services here at DPS. And Clarence Castile is the uncle of Philando Castile and a member of the Working Group on Police-Involved Deadly Force Encounters. We'll begin with Commissioner Harrington. Good afternoon. I'm John Harrington, the Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety. And we're here today because Valerie Castile has had an unending effort to help Minnesotans join other states that decide to educate drivers about traffic stop safety. But more importantly than traffic stop safety, she's been absolutely steadfast in helping us understand what's important in reducing deadly force encounters with police. As has been mentioned, Valerie lost her son, Philandro, when he was shot by a law enforcement officer during a traffic stop in Falcon Heights. Uh, and during that traffic stop, he informed the officer that he was legally carrying a firearm. That was four years ago today. Valerie, I, I, to say that I'm sorry for your loss goes, is, can't ever be enough. Uh, I can't imagine the pain that you've gone through. Uh, and I want you to know that I recognize the courage it's taken you to relive that pain over and over again as you testified with the Deadly Force Working Group, as you've testified before the Senate, before you've testified before the House, and as you've continued to champion the cause of safety. During my 40 years as a cop, I've made thousands of traffic stops. And when you're on the side of the road, walking up to a window to speak to the driver, you're not really sure what you're going to, to find. Maybe it's a grandpa who just didn't see that stop sign he rolled through, or maybe it's a drunk driver who's less than happy about seeing you walk up on him. For the driver, it's also a nerve-wracking experience. Uh, I've been stopped. Uh, and even when you know what to expect, it's, there's an anxiety about getting stopped uh, that everybody that's ever had a driver's license can recognize. You see the you see those lights in the back in the back rear mirror, and all of a sudden everything sort of tightens up on you, and that happens whether you're a cop or you're a civilian. But I want you to imagine what it's like if you don't know what to expect. As we know all too well, traffic stops can turn deadly, as did the one where Philando Castile lost his life. And one way we believe to reduce the danger is to have a clear understanding of what should happen during a traffic stop. Both drivers and the officers that stop them have a role in this. Uh, and so the, the, the guidance we're putting out today is, is really for both. I want you to know that Ms. Castile brought the idea of updating the driver's manual to me and the Department of Public Safety so that it could improve the safety for everyone on the side of the road, cop and civilian. She requested that the driver's manual be updated to include information on what drivers and peace officers should expect during a traffic stop, especially and particularly when the driver has a firearm. She wanted to encourage consistency in traffic stops by law enforcement and to make sure that the drivers would know what to do. And her recommendations became one of the 28 announced recommendations that the Deadly Force Working Group that Keith Ellison, the Attorney General, and I co-chaired. Today, the driver's manual has been updated, and effective today, uh, people will have that information. And, and I want to thank Valerie for her efforts in making this happen, because I can tell you that it, it wasn't on my radar. I don't know if it was on anybody else's radar at, at DPS when she brought it up. Uh, I had not known that other states had already done this, and, and frankly, while I was brand new at DPS when she brought it up, I was a little embarrassed that the state of Minnesota hadn't jumped on this uh, after Philandro had passed. Uh, that other states had gotten to this before we had, uh, did not set well with me. What does the manual tell you? It, it tells you that if, uh, if you're a driver and you have a fire in the vehicle, to keep your hands on the steering wheel or someplace visible when the officer approaches. It tells you to tell the officer that you have a firearm in the vehicle, 
Tell them where the firearm is located while keeping your hands where they can be seen. Don't reach around inside the vehicle. Don't get out of the vehicle. Don't try and jump out to show us where, it's, where the gun is at. Uh, what we want you to do is to stay in the car with your hands someplace we can see them and talk to us. Tell the officer and let the officer give you directions as to what they should do or what you should do. The manual also describes what you as a, a driver can expect from the cop that stops you on the side of the road. You can expect the, the driver to be greeted by the cop and to identify themselves as a peace officer. You can expect that they're going to ask you for your driver's license and proof of insurance. They're going to tell you why you got stopped, and they're going to check your driver's license and other documents. They're, they may tell you to tell them where the gun is. Um, what we want you to do is we want you to keep your hands someplace visible. Hands are what kills in, in, in this business, and so that's what we want you to do. Our message to drivers and law enforcement really is we want to make sure that traffic safety doesn't lead to a personal tragedy. The traffic safety is done in the interest of public safety. And we see this as guidance to law enforcement so that there is consistency across the state of Minnesota. We want everyone involved in a traffic stop to walk away safely. And at this time, I'd like to ask Valerie Castile to come forward and say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Valerie Castile, and uh, my son, Philando Castile, was uh, murdered by the police in Falcon Heights in 2016, July 6, which is today. Unfortunately, it's, it's a bittersweet day. Um, it's been four years now, and it seems like yesterday we're talking about 1,461 days that I have not seen my son, has not touched my son, has not kissed my son. And uh, it brings delight that uh, the Department of Public Safety has re-updated the uh, driver's manual because this little tidbit is very, very important. That bit of information can save lots of lives because you don't know what you're going to get when uh, the police walk up to your car. You know, you know that everything is legitimate. You're legitimate across the board and then you try to be as honest as you can possibly be and tell the truth that there is a weapon in the car and for whatever reason we'll never know the reason we know the excuse but we don't know the reason why my son was shot five times I mean you're sitting in a car with your seatbelt on and, and that lead is hot, baby, as far as I understand it. You know, people that I know that have, have been shot, they say it hurts. And and I'm sure my son was frightened, looking down the barrel of a gun, and he know he hadn't done anything wrong. And, uh, you know, have a casual conversation, and you um, respect the authority of the badge. And you say, sir. I have to tell you, there is a weapon in the car. And for whatever reason, he's not here today. And it's my duty, your duty, my obligation, your obligation, to do everything that we can to protect the citizens of this country. It's not a you thing. It's not a me thing. It's an us thing. We have to do everything possible to prevent the killing of citizens in our country. And if this can help, I pushed it. I sure did. I made phone calls to different states. We uh, visited with other law enforcement. We visited with the community to get some feedback on, you know, what do you think about this? Do you think it's something worth giving a shot? Bad terminology. You know, but we we we've done it, and and I pray that uh, Minnesota can be a model for other states 
the whole United States, be a model and, and, and do these things. We all can do better. I mean, we've had these wonderful working groups with all these great recommendations. Now it's time to implement them. I mean, we've got, we've, we've got some wonderful ideas. I mean, we're talking about prosecutors and activists and ex-law enforcement and, and just a, an array of diversity, a, array of diverse people coming to the table and coming up with these great recommendations. And it's time to utilize them. You know, they're, they're good ideas. They're doable. It's all about getting that information out, a person taking the time to read it and implement some of these things. And I just want to uh, say thank you to uh, the Public Safety Commission and Department for being that model and, and revising the, the uh, manual. And, and please, you know, follow the instruction because we all need to be on the same page. We all need to know what to expect from one another.